You love me like a friend and help me through. So I will worship you. Story Lab. This week we're talking about commitment while we take a look at one of the very best things you can practice. Yeah. Which has nothing to do with catching flies. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about commitment, which is making a plan and putting it into practice. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I gotta ask. What's with uh, everything? Oh, huh. right. Ouch! Yeah, I tripped over one of the dog's chew toys and bashed my forehead on the door frame. And now you're trying to catch flies with a pair of chopsticks to get back at the dog? No! I'm working on my reaction time. Ah, I keep tripping over stuff. If I can make my reaction time faster, I won't have so many accidents. How about practicing something that's actually possible? Are you saying I can't catch this fly? I'm saying you should try this instead. What's that? It's a reaction ball. It's designed to make you react fast. How so? Catch. See? Reaction time is a super important thing to train for. I mean, you need it for almost every sport and everyday activities like riding a bike. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or trying to cross a room without a trip to the <laughs> ER. Okay. Right, you ready? You ready? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You got it? Yeah. Right, react fast. <sighs> yes! My training has paid off! 
Your turn, catch! Ah. <laughs> oh, see? I'm even better than you. I, I don't think so. Yeah. Oof. See? Actually, I know a way to test whose reaction time is faster. Well then, let's do it! Okay, what do we need? This. That's it? That's it. Okay. Okay. Now, take your thumb and your forefinger and hold them just slightly open at the other end of the ruler like this. Oh. You try. Oh, okay. Got it. Now what? This. Hey! You're supposed to catch it by pinching your fingers shut. We'll see how many inches it takes you to react. I was unprepared. Try again and I'll crush it. Okay. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. You have to be prepared. <sighs> Again. Okay. Ready this time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you sure? Yes. Oh, pretty mm. slick. Is that four, nice. four inches? About, I'd say more three and three quarters. Okay, okay, my turn. Right. So you hold it at the top, and Let's whenever you want to drop you do. it. All right, you caught it, first try. Eight. Eight. Yeah, it's, that's, I'm pretty sure that's nowhere near three and three quarters. Best of three? Oh, fine. Okay. So Zeke, tell me, how was your day today? I'm okay, not just, listening to you. I just want to know. Oh, um, you distracted me. Man, that's why you have to pay attention. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, eight. That was, I think, my worst one. Yes, it. Eh, this is a little better. Six. Six my and turn. a half, all right? Six and a half. Okay. There you go. Missed it completely. You are ready. <sighs> You're right. Are you sure? Let me get ready. No, 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 wait, 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 let me get ready. Let me get ready. All okay. right, I'm ready. You're not doing great. I have one more. Oh. I see you. Five. Yes! <laughs> I got the best score. But mine are better overall. You know, I don't know why I can't just catch it right there the exact moment it drops. Well, everything has to go through your brain first. It's like the body's computer. When your body experiences an external stimulus like light or a sound, sensory receptors send electrical impulses to your brain. Then the brain sends signals to the nervous system to travel to the parts of the body that need to move. Who knew this involves all that? Ah, right? You improve your reaction time by strengthening the connection between your body and your brain. Through training. Yep. Plus, it's important to get enough sleep and drink lots of water. Those improve your brain's reaction time, too. God made our brains to connect in an amazing way. And we are made to connect with God, too. Now it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Matthew. Matthew is one of the four Gospels that tell about the life of Jesus. For three years, Jesus traveled from town to town, sharing about God's kingdom and healing people. Near the beginning of this time, Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down to teach his followers. The things that Jesus taught there have come to be known as the Sermon on the Mount. More and more people gathered as Jesus explained what it means to be part of God's kingdom and what it means to show love to God and to others. For example, one of the best ways that we can show love to God is to talk with God in prayer. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I am Brian. The Sermon on the Mount marked a key moment in Jesus' ministry. It laid out the very most important things for his followers. Jesus began by talking about who and what is valued in God's kingdom. And it's upside down from what is most important in most kingdoms. Blessed are those who are spiritually needy. Kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Did you hear that? Jesus said the people who are most blessed are actually those who are humble and admit they need help. He went on to include people who are sad and people who make peace and show mercy. Jesus went on to explain how we should treat each other in God's kingdom with kindness, compassion, and integrity. But, he said, we should never do it for show. 
Be careful not to do good deeds in front of other people. Don't do those deeds to be seen by others. God's kingdom is never about looking better and more perfect than someone else. That even goes for the way we talk to God. When you pray, do not be like those who only pretend to be holy. They love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners. They want to be seen. When you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father. You can't be seen. Now, that doesn't mean you can only talk to God in your room, but it does mean that prayer should never just be for show. It's real, honest-to-goodness conversation with the God who made the entire universe. Jesus gave his followers a kind of outline to use in talking with God. We call it the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come. May what you want to happen be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, just as we also have forgiven those who sin against us. Keep us from sinning when we are tempted. Save us from the evil one. This beautiful prayer has been spoken by believers all over the world for nearly 2,000 years. It's a great one to memorize, but you can also put this in your own words too. Let's give it a go. Our Father in heaven, may your name be honored. By calling on God as Father, we show our trust in God to take care of us. And we want everyone to know that God loves them more deeply than they can imagine. May your kingdom come. May what you want to happen be done on earth as it is in heaven. We know that God will one day make everything right, but we also know that God is at work here and now. We can invite God to make things right and offer ourselves to be part of that process. Give us today our daily bread. We can ask God for anything we need each day. That includes our food, of course, but we also need wisdom and patience and joy as we go through each day. And forgive us our sins, just as we also have forgiven those who sin against us. None of us are perfect. We mess up every day. But God invited us to ask for forgiveness, to clean the slate. This helps us stay close to God and makes us able to forgive and stay close to others too. Keep us from sinning when we are tempted. Save us from the evil one. Sin is anything that breaks our relationship with God. So we can ask God for help to make choices that show love to God and others, even in tough situations. Now your version of this prayer can fit the unique way that God made you. It might go something like this. Dear God, thank you for being a good father. Please help everyone to see how much you love them. Please make everything right in our world, just like it already is in heaven. Please give me food to eat and everything I need today to be kind and brave. Forgive me for the wrong things I've done and help me forgive others just as quickly. When I'm tempted to make a wrong choice, please give me strength to choose wisely. Whether you take time in a quiet moment to pray this whole prayer or quickly cry out to God for help in a tough situation, God promises to hear every word and to be with you through it all. The end. I love to think of all the people over 2,000 years who have said this prayer. Yeah, it's like we get to pray it with them. I think that's exactly what Jesus meant to happen. So what's our part in this story? Our part is simple. You can grow in your faith when you practice talking to God. You can follow the outline of the Lord's Prayer, but you can also simply tell God what's in your heart or, or what you need in the moment. And you can talk to God anytime, anywhere. Like when you wake up in the morning, when you're about to walk into school, at mealtime, at bedtime. Exactly. I mean, you can also thank God for all the good things in your life, even the small ones like a cozy bed or a smile from your friend. And you can talk to God when you're worried. Absolutely. God promises to be with you when you're anxious or scared or sad. Talking to God during those moments, it's a great way to remember that you're not alone. And God is always excited to hear from you. For reals. Yeah, I think you've got it. See you next time. So here's the thing. Practice praying to God. 
And the more you practice connecting with God, oh, your turn. Yes! The more prayer can become your automatic reaction in any tough situation. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. You ready? Yeah, I got it. Ah, uh, oh, almost. And, uh, oh, okay. I caught it. Okay, good. Oh, nice. One hand. Okay. Right, yeah. Uh.